Just a quick update before we start. Um, I've went and got a new microphone because uh, I got some comments on uh, the previous one not being uh, really good on the sound part. So yeah, I hope this improves the sound and let's get started with this video. Hey there, this is Tess and welcome in this new video. In this video we'll cover Azure Synapse Analytics. It's a relatively new service and we'll see what it's all about and why is it relevant for us as Power BI data analysts. All right, let's get started. I hope you enjoy. To explain what Azure Synapse Analytics really is all about, let's start with a simplified view. We have two roles within a company. We have the data scientist and the data analyst. Now, some think they are a bit of the same. Well, in fact, they in practice often work with different kinds of applications, software, and also different kinds of data sources. A data scientist might often work with a data lake, while a data analyst might still work with flat files or a data warehouse that is located on Paris. You also see some key terms on this slide. Data scientists might have uh, big data that is in unstructured formats and then use AI to get insights from that data, while a data analyst will have relational models uh, based on structured data. Now, Azure Synapse Analytics is a data ingestion and preparation tool, but it's actually much more than that. Because of the fact that both roles work with two different platforms, it's also very common eh, that the data scientist might work with Databricks, for example, data analyst might work with just a SQL server, and they have no way of really collaborating with each other. Now, Azure Synapse Analytics solves this problem. As you're able to load data from a lot of different sources, those two roles are in fact able to work together. I've listed the key service capabilities here, and you can immediately see that it's a unified analytics platform. So it offers everything from data integration, loading your data, exploring what kind of data you're dealing with, and then also performing the transformations and the analytics all into one single environment, Azure Synapse Analytics. Also important to note, previously you had Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Well, this is now fully rebranded as Azure Synapse Analytics. On the right side, you see data lake exploration. Well, there's a lot of options to immediately explore what kind of data you're dealing with and also to extract insights from that data. You have a lot of choices in terms of what kind of languages you use for your transformations, for your exploration, including T-SQL, Python, Scala, and so on. And you also have the, the choice into what kind of engine you want to use, whether Apache Spark or SQL engines. Important for us as a data analyst is, of course, that it's integrated with our existing BI solutions that we all know. Microsoft Power BI is directly available from the Azure Synapse platform. Now, in the next slide, I'll cover some questions that we get asked a lot. And basically, the question that comes up first is, well, what about SQL Data Warehouse? Eh? Where is it? Well, now Azure Synapse Analytics fully replaced Azure SQL Data Warehouse, so you don't have to worry about that. Difference with Power Query Editor. Eh? Some people say, well, I really prefer the Power Query Editor over another platform. Advantages of using um, Synapse instead of Power Query Editor is that you can use multiple languages for your data preparation and transformation. You're not limited to the M code. Easily scale is of course uh, related to the data sources and then it brings together the whole ETL process. What do you mean by that is yeah, it's linked through all these different uh, applications, different sources. Uh, you can connect to your Azure Data Factory, to Azure Data Bricks, in all into one environment. So that makes it uh, so powerful. The key advantages of using Synapse for ETL, as I said before, the direct connection through these linked services like Azure Data Lake, Amazon Redshift, and MongoDB. When you're working with Direct Query, as for example, you have a very large data set and you need to use Direct Query for performance reasons, then again, Synapse will be the better choice here because of some uh, typical elements like uh, result set uh, caching, materials, views, uh, if you're interested in finding out, okay, why is the performance different, make sure to, to Google those things. 
Um, one stop shop for security is also an important one. You, you get to decide who gets access to what data into uh, Azure Synapse. And as we said before, there's uh, different engines available depending on your use case. So we've said before that it's fully integrated with AI and BI capabilities. So let's actually take a look and find out how this works in practice. So let's head over to the documentation pages, typing it in Google. There we go. Um, so this page gives you really a, a great overview of what's possible, what this is all about, um, and uh, the options. Uh, you can go for, okay, how does it interact with, in terms of machine learning capabilities, uh, Apache Spark is also, how does it work from a data flow perspective? So really interesting stuff. Important for us as a data analyst is of course the Visualize with Power BI Quick Start. And this is a tutorial that will give you um, all the things that you need to connect your Azure Synapse workspace to your Power BI workspace. In this way you can work directly in Azure Synapse but also have the integration with Power BI. Yeah, so if you're interested, you can go ahead and uh, do this example, but let's actually take a look and see um, how this works in the Azure Synapse workspace. All right, so we're in our Azure Synapse workspace and here we can see Open Synapse Studio. So we'll click on that, close this one. So now we can immediately see a couple of things. We have data here, the associated data and a SQL database that is automatically created. We see also develop Power BI as we already created a link between Power BI and our Azure Synapse workspace. We see integrations uh, and then here the monitor gives us um, an idea of the requests that are made, SQL requests, the pools that we have available uh, and the pipelines that we're running. And also manage is, is really interesting as we can see the linked services that are associated with this workspace. So we can see the links to, for example, an Azure Data Factory, Azure Databricks and so on. Here we can already see that there's a link between a Power BI workspace and between Synapse. But um, let's actually see what this uh, looks like from the start. And so we, if you click on Visualize, we will have the option to immediately uh, select the data set uh, that we want to work with. Um, in this case, I've already linked with one, but you can also um, yeah, set, if, if this is the first time that you're setting it up, it will show it like this, so connect to Power BI, and it will ask you, okay, let's give it a name, and to what tenant and workspace name do we want to connect. If you connect, it will um, show the develop tab, and it will say Power BI, and then it will show your workspace that you have access to. And you can immediately see the report uh, as it was in uh, or as it's currently displaying in Power BI web service and you can even make changes to this report as you're uh, you're viewing it in Azure Synapse workspace so there's a direct integration between Azure Synapse and between Power BI web service and what if you would for example want to add some role level security to our reports well in that case we could actually get the data that we've loaded into Synapse and use it as a data source in Power BI Desktop. We can connect by uh, using the Get Data option and then connect to the Synapse workspace by providing the URL. Or we could connect to the SQL server that is automatically created when provisioning the Synapse workspace. Now, of course, this can maybe transform into some kind of different workflow when building reports. We might start with our Synapse workspace and we would all uh, load the different uh, data from the various sources that we have. We perform some minor uh, SQL statements to transform the data to get the data that we need. Then we would uh, transition to Power BI Desktop and perform the more advanced transformations, maybe also add some role level security. We would publish our report to the Power BI web service yeah, so we can collaborate with others, we can publish it to an app. And then we would also be able to see it directly within our Synapse workspace, all the changes that we did in Power BI Desktop. Now, if we want to add additional data sources afterwards, the cycle then starts again. Just a really a different approach um, 
than just starting in Power BI Desktop and then just using the service. I think Synapse brings a lot uh, of new options to the table and you might uh, want to try it out with your next uh, report. So how do we get started with Azure Synapse Analytics? We can just type in Synapse Analytics into the portal uh, from Azure and then we'll have to create a new Synapse workspace. We can create one for every team, for every project that we have, or just uh, maybe just a first one that we have to create as part of setting up our datasets and integration with Power BI. We'll have to connect it to a subscription and we'll also have to give it a workspace name. Um, it has to be lowercase. So I'll just say, there we go. Um, and we'll also have to apply um, or link it with an Azure data lake storage account. Yeah? So in the later stage that uh, the workspace is also able to connect with that account. Security, well, we see that the system automatically um, references a SQL server, uh, which is which gets created as part of the workspace setup. I will just have to type in uh, a name and a password for that SQL server that we can later connect to. You can also choose some encryption options. You can also say, okay, do we want to, we want to be a managed virtual network? Do you want to limit the IP addresses that can connect to that workspace and so on? And I will just click on review and create, we'll get an, an assessment of the cost and an overview. And then we can just click on create and we are good to go. In summary, Azure Synapse Analytics is an integrated cloud service used for data ingestion. And it combines the different services that you can use to get your data from, like Azure Data Factory or Azure Data Bricks. It allows for data exploration directly on the source data and it's tightly integrated with Power BI Web Service allowing for immediate visualization towards the end user. It's useful for us as a data analyst when our data comes from a variety of different services. It's also useful when we're working with large data sets and we've chosen Direct Query as the most suitable option to store our data. And it's also useful when we want to enable cross-team collaboration. Yeah. We started our, our story, let's say, between the, the siloed approach between a data scientist and a data analyst. Well, now with Azure Synapse Analytics, they're able to work together into one single platform. When used together, Synapse and Power BI unlock yeah, just a, a new way of thinking about data workloads. And we're very excited to see how this will change uh, the way of working uh, into different teams that we're interacting with. Thanks for listening. This was our uh, video on Azure Synapse Analytics. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.